Hello everybody, I'm really happy to share my success with you all. Uh, actually, the secret behind this success is the team MDS Conquer and family. There are three C's important for success. That is consistency, commitment and Conquer team with you. The credit I wanted to give for MDS Conquer team, the plan of action and their uh, weekly schedules helped me a lot. I would like to thank team MDS Conquer which has helped me uh, throughout my preparation. For the juniors who are preparing, uh, you have joined a team which is well planned and organized and all you have to do is just study. Uh, you have to know your priorities and your limitations and success will be behind you. A small amount of quality preparation since day one is more important than sternest preparation during the last four months. MDS Conquer family makes you to be consistent day to day updates and everything which we need to learn in the BDS. In my view, PP books are very important, uh, follow them. I would request all the juniors to continue to work hard and may you get all the success. You have to be very clear about your goals, know your priorities, know your limitations and then be patient, persevere, that's it. Throughout my preparation, there are many ups and downs, but sir's motivation and timely guidance, and sir, but Correct on in low on a point, we used to get that voice note. Believe in yourself, you can succeed. You can succeed more than me. I owe my success to MDS Conquer and I also wish you all the best. Believe in yourself, never underestimate yourself. You can do anything and everything. Just believe in that and go on with the preparation. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Madhuri from Team MDS Conquer. In this video, we'll see about a very, very important defend me defense mechanism of our body that is inflammation. And because of this inflammation only, we are able to clear any injurious agent or any foreign material that is present in our body. And here we will see about the cells and signs of inflammation. And the cells include both the acute inflammatory cells and the chronic inflammatory cells. So, if you see the inflammation, inflammation is a local response of a living mammalian tissues and because of this inflammation only, this body acts as a defense mechanism. So, it will eliminate or limit the spread of injurious agent. So, why inflammation is important? So, what happens if there is no inflammation? You can see the, here these four statements. That is, if there is no inflammation, the infectious agents would go unchecked. That means there is no cure for the infectious diseases. And the wounds will never heal. As we have seen in the own healing video also, the, there is a stage called as inflammatory phase. So, without this inflammatory phase, the wounds will never heal. And the, in practice of medicine, inappropriately triggered or poorly controlled. So, we cannot maintain the diseases like triggered and these diseases are poorly controlled and because if there is no inflammation the injured agents or the tissues might remain permanently in our body like a decaying tissues so the hence inflammation is a very important to our body and this scientists are contributed to the inflammation history of inflammation and which are very important to note so first we'll see about the cornelius cells he Cornelius Celsus was the first to describe the four cardinal signs of inflammation. As all of us know, the four cardinal signs of inflammation which includes rubber, tumor, calor and dollar. So, these four cardinal signs of inflammation were described by the Cornelius Celsus. If you see this, this Julius Kornheim, he was first to use the microscope. Okay, He was first to use the microscope to observe the inflamed blood vessels. That is one contribution and there is a one more important process called as a diapedesis. We will see this diapedesis in the acute inflammatory slides. So, this diapedesis term was given by Julius Conham and John Hunter. So, John Hunter, he proposed that the inflammation is not a disease. Okay, He proposed that inflammation is not a disease. It is a non-specific response non-specific response was given by john hunter if you see this ellie 
मटकीनॉक कॉफ ही डिस्कवर्ड द फैगोसाइटोसिस ओके ही कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड फॉर द फैगोसाइटोसिस देन द रोडोल्फ वर्च्यू दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ही गेव द फिफ्थ कार्डिनल साइन दैट इज लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन सो द फोर कार्डिनल साइंस वर गिवन बाय कॉर्नीलियस सेल्सिस वेर एज दिस रोडोल्फ वर्च्यू गेव द फिफ्थ कार्डिनल साइन विच इज कॉल्ड एज ए लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन then at last but not the least thomas lewis and this thomas lewis he gave the concept of chemical substances that is the histamine okay he gave the chemical con substances concept which is called as histamine which is very very important in the inflammation then coming to the etiology of the inflammation they may the inflammation may be of physical agents like a heat cold or radiation chemical agents like organic and inorganic agents and infective agents like a bacteria viruses and immunological agents like antigen and antibody reactions so this is the etiology of the inflammation then as of i told there are five signs of inflammation so the first four are given by cornelius celsus which includes heat redness swelling pain pain is also called as a dolor Swell, swelling is also called tumor redness is called as a rubor and heat is called as a calor and the fifth sign is loss of function which is given by rudolf virchow so these are the five cardinal signs of inflammation coming to the important thing here there are cells of inflammation so here this gives the cell list of cells so first we'll see about the polymorphs okay or the neutrophils so these cells are the initial phagocytosis of bacteria and foreign body so if any foreign body enters into our body the initial phagocytosis cytosis is done by this polymorphs and this is a acute inflammatory cell this is very important they can ask like which of the following is acute inflammatory cell or a chronic inflammatory cell so this polymorph is a acute inflammatory cells so the mediators of this cells will be of primary gr granules which includes uh, mpo lysozyme cationic proteins acid hydrolases and elastase these are the primary granules of mediators there are secondary granules includes lysozyme alkaline phosphate collagenase lactoferrin tertiary granules includes gelatinase and catepsin and the fourth is the reactive oxygen metabolites see these are the primary granules secondary granules tertiary granules and reactive oxygen metabolites which are acts as a mediators for this neutrophils the second will be of monocyte or macrophage and it also a it involves in bacterial phagocytosis it is a chronic inflammatory cells and even it regulates the lymphocyte response so in this thing the features of the cells are very important rather than this mediator features are very very important so if you see the mediators acid and neutral hydrolases cationic protein phospholipase prostaglandins and interleukin 1 especially are the mediators for this monocyte and macrophage then coming to the lymphocyte it all of us know there's humoral and cell mediated immune responses it is also a chronic inflammatory cell and regulates the macrophage response and the mediators will be b cells and the t cells so please remember the features of the cell and you have to remember which cell belongs to the chronic inflammation and which cell belongs to the acute inflammation then coming to the plasma cell they are derived from the b cells and it is also a chronic inflammatory cell and the mediators includes antibody synthesis and secretion whereas eosinophil eosinophil is very important it you it acts in the allergic states and uh, parasitic infections and it is also a chronic inflammatory cell and uh, the mediators includes reactive oxygen metabolites lysosomal agents and the prostaglandin are the mediators then finally the basophil are the mast cell this receptor for the ig molecules and the electron dense granules and the mediators will be histamine leukotriene and the platelet activating factor so see that these are the mediators of basophil or the mast cell then here the names given for the macrophages were given in different names when based upon the presence in their tissue so if you take this this epithelioid cells or modified macrophages seen in the granulomatous inflammation then the kaffer cells which is important it is seen in the liver 
allular macrophages or type 3 pneumocyte as name in, name, name indicates it is seen in the lungs and the reticulum cells please this is very important reticulum cells in are uh, present in the bone, bone marrow then tingle body macrophages it is uh, it is also important present in the lymph node then the littoral cells of splenic sinusoids osteoclast in the bone microglial cells in the brain langerhans cells are dendritic histiocytes are seen in the skin then Hofbauer cells of placenta. So, this is also important. And the mesangial cells are glomerulus. So, all these are the macrophages which are given based on the presence of the tissue. Then coming to the inflammatory Jain cells, you can see the foreign body type of Jain cells. Okay, this foreign body type of Jain cells will have a numerous nuclei. And even this nuclei are scattered throughout the cytoplasm you can see in the picture these are scattered throughout the cytoplasm and this can be seen in the granulomatous inflammations chronic granulomatous inflammations and mostly like leprosy and the tuberculosis and the second stage second cells are here the langhans type of cells so here the nuclei are arranged around the periphery in a horseshoe uh, in a ring form or a horseshoe shaped or uh, they can uh, can be arranged in a cluster at the two poles of the cell and these Langhans cells can be seen in the tuberculosis and the sarcoidosis. Then coming to the Tauton type of cells, they consist of a vacuolated cytoplasm. These are very important cytoplasm due to lipid content and this is present in seen in xanthoma. Please note down this is important. So, these are the inflammatory giant cells and there is another type of inflammatory giant cell which is called as a ASCOF cell. ASCOF cells are present in rheumatic nodules and this ASCOF cells which are called as ASCOF cells which are seen in uh, rheumatic nodules and they are derived from the cardiac histocytes. Okay, cardiac histiocytes. So, these are the inflammatory giant cells. Then... Coming to the tumor giant cells, the tumor giant cells will be of anaplastic cells which are large cells with numerous hyperchromatic nuclei and can be seen mostly in the carcinomas and the sarcomas. Then the reed steinberg cells uh, generally a binucleated and seen in the Hodgkin's lymphoma and uh, coming to osteoclastic giant cells which are seen in the osteoclastoma. So these are the tumor giant cells of the inflammation so that's all about the cells and signs of inflammation so i hope everyone is strong that strong and always believe in yourself stay positive and happy learning with mds conquer